Transmitter device activating. Coordinate set for Earth 2. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Earth 2 podcast, resuming normal service this week as we continue our exploration of the DC Comics multiverse and the legacy of their Golden Age characters through the Silver and Bronze Ages of comics. I'm Peter Watson. And I'm David Steele. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. It's a bit of a slight, tiny kind of another <laughs> slight kind of a tiny sidestep this week. We're going to read the story from issue 11 of The Shadow. The Shadow. Published on the 11th of March 1975. Fact fans, the 11th of March 1991 was a Monday and things came tumbling down. Anyway, not that my brain lingers on such things. Regular listeners may recall the two issues of Batman we did early in the year. One with Steve and one with Pete when we, we covered Batman's encounters with The Shadow. Mm-hmm. And we're doing issue 11 of The Shadow, because obviously DC published an ongoing with him. We're doing it for a reason. And when Peter describes the cover, that reason should hopefully become clear. At the top, we have the line of DC superstars. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The Shadow. Shadow knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. The Shadow does know. I think Mm -hmm. we've we've established that long ago. Mm. Why the comic is still asking us, I've no idea. Unless it's rhetorical. (laughs) And this is number 11, 25 cents in the other corner. There's a caption box that says, Hero fights hero when the shadow meets the Avenger. And we have a very dramatic cover image. We have, leaping from up a hill, the figure of the Avenger, who is wearing a purple kind of unitard almost. His features are pure white. They're pure white? Yes. We don't mean that in a Glaswegian way. <laughs> white face, white hair, white hands. His skin is completely white. He's holding a dagger in his hand. And he's leaping down towards the shadow, who is both pistols in his hands, looking up with his beaky nose poking out from over his scarf. My goodness. In the background, running down the hill from a lighthouse, there are some armed men who are running behind the Avenger. And take a drink, folks, because there is a giant, giant full moon looming in the background. And the waves are crashing against the rocks. Very, very dramatic. It's very dynamic. It's just a shame that they could, I think they could have made the shadow logo just a little bit smaller mm-hmm. because it would reveal more of the detail of the lighthouse. Because it's not too clear the way that you know with the Avenger leaping in front of it and the the W of the shadow just sort of cropping out the top of the lighthouse and the Comics Code Authority stamp blocking out the torchlight, shall we say? Yes. But you're right. It's incredibly dynamic. It's dynamic as if it's cracking. Mm-hmm. Who's the Avenger then, Peter? For that is obviously the reason why we're doing this issue of The Shadow, because The Shadow is meeting the Avenger. Yes, the Avenger is another old pulp hero who also had a radio show. His real name is Richard Henry Benson. He was one of these adventurers who went all over the world and solved problems everywhere he went. Yes, he's one of these kind of like really high skill set guys like Doc Savage, that sort of, course. of thing. Yeah, who can basically turn his hand to anything. You know how people were in the Golden Age. Like our friend Alistair Boyd. Yes, and did he perhaps as the Avenger? Well, Alistair does globetrot and can turn his hand to anything, <laughs> so I th- next time I see him, i.e. tomorrow, I'm going to point this out to him. There we are. Now, as I mentioned in the cover, his skin and hair are pure white. Now, there's a reason for this. During his adventures, his wife and daughter were kidnapped and presumed killed. Right. Uh, their bodies were never found. Gosh. And the sheer shock of this turned his skin completely white, including his hair. But it also had a weird side effect in that his skin became malleable. He could change his facial features to resemble other people. Oh, right. And with a combination of hair dye and uh, makeup, he could impersonate other people. That's very interesting. Yeah. Very useful. As I said, he had a radio series. He was in the pulps. And he also had some comics. Now, at this time, DC were publishing a comic featuring the Avenger called Justice Inc. Yes. Four issues, bi-monthly. Issue 1 was published just a couple of weeks before this issue of The Shadow on the 20th of February 1975. And issue 4 limped out on the 19th of August 1975. So, summer of 75 was the summer of the Avenger. Do you remember the summer of 75, Peter? You're just that little bit older than me. I will certainly do, yes. Oh, it's all right. It then. was very hot. Good. Issues 2, 3 and 4 drawn by Jack Kirby, interestingly. And, like a lot of other things, there was a two-issue prestige format miniseries in 1989 by Andy Helfer. And the legend that's Kyle Baker... Fantastic. I've got that somewhere. I should really read it now that we're doing this story. <laughs> so, Peter, do you know much of the about the Avenger? Have you read much of the Avenger? I've got some of the pulps, and I've I did read them a long time ago, but uh, I can't remember much about them. That's to be fair. perfectly honest. The origin story is gripping because it is very different. The fact that his wife and daughter were have gone. And just the sheer shock caused this massive change in him. It's, it's a right. rather unique origin, I think. Yeah, I think so. I would, so. Agree. I would, I would echo that assertion. Yeah. I've got a full set of, of Justice Inc. But have I read them? No. 
I sent to Ross the other night. He's, he's around issue 139, issue 200 of Superboy and his Legion okay. sort of read through. Mm-hmm. And we sort of talked briefly about how, you know, Karate Kid's book was imminent. Yeah. And I was saying to Ross, yeah, I was a full set with it for over 25 years and I've never read it. Which is insane because <laughs> I love Karate Kid. So yeah. I should do that soon. Maybe when Kenny lets me have a break from reading Doctor Who books for the power of three, I'll be able to read some comics. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Will that day ever come? Who can say? <laughs> anyway, back to the plot, the shadow. I'm just going to draw Peter's attention to the top right-hand corner of my copy of issue 11. Look at that. Oh, okay. There's obviously maybe been a price sticker or something over the... Yeah, over the 25 cents. It's been torn and off. It's and it's been torn off and taken a bit of the cover with it. And someone's penned the number 11 over it. Very neatly, though. Oh, my goodness. Yes, uh-huh. a lot of care and consideration. Yeah. Got into that. So, yeah, check out Instagram to see that then, listeners. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even on Twitter as well. But there you go. Blah, blah, blah. So, two pulp legends are about to meet in the pages of issue 11. And so after far too much preamble, let's jump into the story properly as a massive dynamic opening splash image, which has a quote at the top from the titular hero of the comic, which reads, I hereby certify the following pages to be a true record, signed the shadow. And we see the lighthouse that Peter described in the cover, and the rocky outcrop with lightning and a stormy sea all around it, shining its beams out. And we can see a dark skinned man with a large hooked golden earring smiling in the foreground. The Shadow and the Avenger are having fisty cuffs. Perspectives are all off in this, but behind the battling heroes, we can see a submarine moored and a bunch of Chinese soldiers firing machine pistols in the general direction of the Avenger and the Shadow. And below that, there's a little explosion, a small explosion, and a few people ducking from it. What's going on? I've no idea. But anyway, there's a caption, thank goodness, that reads, There are many forms of evil and many forms of good in the world. At some point, the difference between the two becomes lost in a nebulous cloud of ideologies. On this night, it will be difficult to pierce that cloud. Villain will claw at villain. Crusader will clutch a crusader. On this night, the unknown will merge with the macabre. On this night, the The night of of the the Avenger. Avenger. Tremendous. And we are told that this comic has been brought to us by... Michael Usland and E.R. Cruz, Raconteurs. Yep, I'm going to just say it right now, listeners, this is the single best comic art I've ever seen in my whole life, probably. There might be a slight exaggeration, but reading this, I was just like, wow. Why was this guy not drawing everything? You know, Mm -hmm. it just knocks everything I've seen recently into a tin hat, etc. So into the story properly. First panel on page two has a caption. A mysterious message for the Shadow, and with mechanical precision, his vast network of loyal agents starts into action on the deadly streets of Chinatown. Yeah, and we're obviously in Chinatown because we can see some signs with Chinese writing. I wonder if those signs actually mean anything. If anyone can translate, let us know. And we see a lad being chased along the streets. He's running up to a green car and he's yelling, The Shadow, get this to the... With a couple of bam-bams gunshots, we see him being fired upon by his two pursuers. The this that he's talking about is a rolled-up piece of paper, which he manages to hand to the guy who's behind the wheel of the green car. Is it a cab? It's a cab. It's a cab, thank you. This guy wears a sort of checked peat cap and a green jacket. We will see him further in the story. The cigarette in his gob, he drives off. And as he hears along a busy street, another car turns a corner to intercept his path. The driver of that car saying, Now, here he comes! With a smash, two cars collide. The chap with the check jacket can be seen emerging from the wreckage, saying, The shadow! Quick! And a hand can be seen reaching for the piece of paper. And seconds later, in a place that men say doesn't exist... Yes, the chap in the white shirt and brown trousers who took the piece of paper from the, the poor unfortunate in the cab... He's walking down a flight of stairs towards the shadow who's standing there in all his hat and scarf and caped glory in this chap in the white shirt. He's holding the piece of paper out to the shadow and he says, The message. The shadow takes it, opens it up, and the chap who's born, who we get a closer look at here, we can see he's got blonde hair and a weird sort of attachment over his left eye. Mm-hmm. It looks like some kind of mechanical appliance to my uninformed eyes. He observes that the paper the shadow is holding, It's blank. The shadow laughs. <laughs> You see him dipping a piece of paper into what is obviously a tray with some kind of solution in it. Is it photograph developing fluid? Something like that. And with his face reflected in the, the liquid, the shadow says to his colleague, You look, but you do not see Burbank. This paper may tell the end of our society. We can now read the message and it says, More military weapons stolen. Confirm growth of an underground army. Objective, international invasions. The shadow reads this and says, My reports were true. It is as I knew. 
Shadow crosses to a desk, lit by a lamp, and starts writing a piece of paper, saying, Burbank, for that is the chap with the blonde hair and the weird eye attachment, you will summon my primary street agents from Districts 1 and 2 for a meeting in my midtown sanctum. This is it. It has finally come. A slow dissolve. A gallery of nameless faces fills the lair of the shadow. Few can recognize any of the others present, but all have one thing in common. Their blind obedience to the man in black. Yes, we see the shadow standing, casting a magnificent shadow as he stands, with about a dozen or so men all ranged about in front of him. We can see the chap who is driving the cab, now is his arm on a sling. We can see the Burbank fellow is lurking. There's some other men, one guy in a blue jacket, one guy with a big hat, one guy in a green jacket, one guy in a purple jacket with a fur-lined collar sat very close to the shadow. And the shadow is in the process of addressing them all, and he's saying, And I need the power of your guns as well. You will each receive written instructions. We must get them before... Then he breaks off and yells, Everyone, to the floor! The Shadow's agents are driven into violent action less by the sudden storming of their secret headquarters than by the knowledge that one of their own must have betrayed them. Yeah, because all of a sudden, the Sanctum has been invaded by a group of armed men, pistols, machine guns firing, there's a whole crash and rat tat as the Shadow's agents start firing back. From out of the blackness leaps the Shadow. Shadow with his arms wide and he throws his head back and he laughs. One of the new arrivals yells, Those eyes, that sound, it's, it's a... And one of the others says, It can't be! No! And the Shadow's agents realise that the intruders are seeing far beyond what their own eyes record. Yeah, because... Blindly, the enemy seeks release from the terror in their minds. This is a great panel with a crash. Ah! And screams, three or four of the, the new arrival bad guys leap out of a window and fall down towards the street many, many floors below. We then see that they didn't all jump out the window because two of the Shadow's agents, Shrevey, who's the guy who we met earlier on in the cab, whose arm was in a sling, but he's still holding a gun in the arm that's in a sling, and Harry, who's the guy in the, the purple jacket, the fur-lined collar, have managed to grab one of the, the intruders as they walk him up towards the Shadow. Harry says, We captured this big fish, Shadow. He seemed to be leading the splits. Shadow gestures and says, Remove his hood at once. And they do so to reveal a very young-looking, crew-cutted, slightly overweight lad. And the Shadow extends his left hand towards this new arrival. We can see the ring on his finger glowing as the Shadow says, Gaze into my girasol. Who are you? Who sent you? This boy replies, I am Algernon Heathcote Smith. Smitty, I was sent by the Avenger. At that moment, a few miles away, there stands a man who looks as if he has risen from a slab in a mortuary. Richard Benson, known as The Avenger. Richard Benson is in the company of a thick-set man with red hair. You see what looks like a bonsai tree in the foreground and lots of nice furniture dotted all around. Richard Benson, The Avenger, standing in the foreground, looking into the middle distance, and he's very thoughtful as his pal behind him says, Mr. Benson, Smithy ain't showing up, I tell you. You're right, McMurdy. We've waited long enough. General Milberg says more weapons are gone. One country is accusing another and the threat of a new world war is growing. Now it's again time for Justice Incorporated to carry out its duty. We... There's a click behind them. Is that a pistol poking through the curtains? Suddenly, the eyesight man hears a weapon being cocked. Whirls, acts. Yes, he whirls, pulls a knife out of his boot, which he hurls, and it pins the rest of the bear of the pistol to the wall. Goodness me, we see the pistol dropping. The Avenger steps forward and grabs at the arm of the intruder, saying, All right, Mac, let's see who our would-be assassin is. Pulls the curtain open, and a young lady, thick brown hair, and a long red coat is revealed. The Avenger says, Who are you? Who sent you? My name is Marco Lane, and I work for the Shadow. You've already met Ike, the knife, Miss Lane. Now, unless you inform us of the whereabouts of your Shadow, you'll be introduced to Mike, the gun. You wouldn't. You can be serious. Miss Lane... I am always serious. He puts the pistol up near her forehead. We can see that she's sweating. Of course, her arm's still pinned into the curtain on the wall. The glassy-eyed Margot responds mechanically, as if entranced by an unseen power. Margot then says, The Shadow is operating out of Lamont Cranston's summer mansion on the Jersey coast. The Avenger turns to his red-haired colleague, saying, Mac, contact Nellie, Josh, Rosabelle, and Smitty if you can locate him. This shadow character may be the one responsible for those military weapon thefts. Right, says McMurdy, and we can see him going to a small radio microphone. The Avenger looks to his left at a couple of framed photographs on the wall, obviously of his wife and daughter. You can see they've been dedicated, and he says, We'll wipe out this shadow's organisation as we will eliminate all the rats. I vowed that the day the underworld slaughtered my wife and child, and I mean to keep that vow. Weird forces are toying with the two most powerful vigilante groups in the world. 
at the Shadow's headquarters. Yes, we can see that Shreve is reading a copy of Detective Comics number one. Gasp. Wow, so does that mean that the Shadow and the Avengers adventures take place on Earth Prime? Or just any other Earth... Or maybe it's Earth 1, because this could be a... Mm -hmm. This is obviously a Golden Age copy. I don't know. Yes, yes, could be. I don't know. And Harry says to Shrevey... What are you reading, Shrevey? One of them comic books, Harry. Look, all new stories in colour for a dime. (laughs) What'll they think of next? Come here, Shrevey. You've never met Jericho Druk, have you? He's on our side. Hello, says new arrival. Shrevey gets up from his chair, still with his comic in hand, walking over to make the acquaintance, but the boss isn't having it. He's annoyed at all this interruptions when he says, Quiet! The others turn to look at him as he sits behind his big desk, penning a bit of paper out as he's saying, Silence! We have been uncovered here. I will deal with the traitor among you swiftly. But now we have a mission to bring the justice of the Shadow to the Avenger. You have your orders? Who knows what thoughts lurk in the mind of the Shadow? I see that the Shadow has written a piece of paper, Margot Lane, traitor, and he has underlined traitor for emphasis. Arriving then at the top of page 8, a caption further sets the scene. Deal, New Jersey. Summer resort for many presidents and many New Yorkers. Vacation home for socialite Lamont Cranston and temporary haven for the laugh of the shadow. We see a gorgeous big country state down by the sea. There's a lighthouse in the distance behind it. I wish we could take a drink every time. Did I say that when we did that Brave and the Bold? Let's take a drink every time we see a lighthouse. I don't know. <laughs> Going forward, beautiful rendered landscape from inside this large spatial palatial building we hear harry saying margot still hasn't reported into burbank maybe she forget margot she is no longer your concern you and jericho will have the agents meet me at the sandy hook lighthouse tonight a mist of salt air slinks across the deserted jersey sand dunes that night carrying with it the stench of evil beautiful shot of the lighthouse inside the lighthouse two men confer unaware they are overheard we see two chinese gentlemen one of whom wearing a very military style uniform and looks like a fez another chap more stereotypically attired shall we say top note and all that sort of stuff going on and they appear to be tending to some large canisters of some sort the first one says with these torpedoes our stockpile will be big enough to blow up the brooklyn navy yard the master will truly conquer all come The sub is due, says his colleague, but what they don't see, but we do see, is the shadow of the shadow looming over them. With a laugh, (laughs) he swings down, kicking the armed one in the khaki uniform, sending him flying and his fez flying, as his colleague turns and says, Who? The one who wasn't in military uniform, starts running up the spiral staircase inside the lighthouse, trying to get away, thinking to himself, Why doesn't the master help me, after all my years of devotion? My... My only chance is to attack this hyena. And he's being pursued by the shadow, who continues to laugh in that evil, freaky, scary way. <laughs> They've reached the top of the lighthouse. We can see the lamp behind them as the Chinese man says, you, you cannot frighten me, maniac. You're only a man. Am I? Yes, only a man. Let's see who you really are. He reaches forward, grabbing at the shadow's mask, pulling it away from his face. He recoils in horror, saying, <gasps> The Dark Eagle! We get a close-up of the shadow's eyes, widen staring as he says, you know too much. Chinese man backs away from the shadow towards the glass of the lighthouse. We can see that the shadow's mask falling to the ground as the intruder says, Keep away! Keep, keep! Yeah! Yet the glass can't be very secure or very strong because he's managed to fall through it. There's even any sign that the shadow pushed him. The shadow <laughs>, laughs quietly to himself as he reaches down to pick up his mask. And the secret of the Dark Eagle, whatever it might have been, is lost to an unsuspecting world. The shadow glides down the long winding stairs to a prearranged rendezvous with his men. We see the shadow emerging from the lighthouse, and Harry and Shrevy and Jericho also surround a few others, and the shadow is saying, Here is the bait. The mouse will come. Prepare to destroy a submarine. Harry says, A submarine? At that instant, behind a nearby dune... Yes, we see the Avenger and a bunch of his colleagues, and Margot Lane, hiding behind a rock. There's a woman dressed in a spectacular green outfit. You think this might be Nelly? You can see McMurdy there as well. Nelly points to where we can see the shadow of the shadow and she says, Look, it's the shadow and the stolen torpedoes the general told us about. It begins. If the world is indeed a stage, then the curtain has risen on the final act. Yeah, it's a great shot here. We're basically looking down from the top of the lighthouse. We see the shadow and his men and the Avenger and his team stepping up from behind the rocks, rushing towards them as the Avenger yells, Take them! The two groups confront each other. We can see McMurdy going for Shrewy. The Avenger pulls a pistol against the two pistols the Shadow is bearing. The Shadow laughs wildly as the Avenger says, I fail to see the humour in this situation. The Shadow fires both pistols. The Avenger 
fires a pistol and has his knife ready to do something with as well. And the two mysterious warriors of justice begin to learn about each other the hard way. The Avenger fires and actually very cannily manages to shoot one of the pistols out of the Shadow's hand. Equally, the Shadow manages to fire and knock the dagger out of the Avenger's hand. Very exciting. Lots of crack and ping sound effects as the captioning continues. Like Roman gladiators who have disarmed each other, the Shadow and the Avenger advance into hand-to-hand combats unaware that their every move is being silently screened. Yeah, there's a circular insert panel, which is obviously the point of view shot from a periscope. We see the lighthouse with the beams stretching out, the lightning cracking overhead, the various teams of the adventurers fighting on the beach, all through the perspective of someone from inside the submarine who can be heard saying, Ha! They move like pawns on a chessboard. Prepare to surface. Arm yourselves. But even pawns can sometimes do the unexpected. Yes, because the shadow and the Avenger are now grappling at close quarters. See, the shadow's left hand has got a hold of the Avenger's face, prompting the masked one to say, Your face! It... And then he relaxes, straightens up, raises a hand towards everyone else and says, Stop! All of you! We have been deceived! And he gets to his feet, helping the Avenger up too. And then he goes to shake the Avenger's hand, saying... Your face. My reports tell me of a crime fighter named Richard Benson with a face that is malleable like clay. I am Benson, and you? I am the Shadow. I destroy crime. You now call yourself the Avenger? Is that not a bit vain? Perhaps. If I thought myself holy enough to simply dispose of evil rather than let justice dictate the course. An eternal second of silent tension mounts between the two forces of good. Then it is suddenly broken by a loud command. It's worth pointing out at this juncture that an eternal second of silent tension supported menswear at JB's in Dudley in October 1996. The Shadow addresses one of his team saying, Harry, bring Margot here. Jericho, bring forward the Avengers' aid. I will find out why they attempted murder by piercing the depths of their minds. No tricks, mister, says the Avenger. Shadow turns to him saying, I have my methods. I do not ask for your approval, but I demand your respect. We're continuing the third page following. There's an an advert for learning electronics with the Cleveland Institute of Electronics. I wonder if they're still in Ohio. People can find out and let us know. Ah, full page house ad for Stalker and Beowulf. Mm -hmm. So we'll see no more about that at this time. And the first panel of page 13, we get a nice close up of the Shadow's Girasol and we see the reflected faces of Smitty and Margot as the Shadow says... Margo, Smith, listen to my every word. You will tell me all. Within moments, the Shadow knows what has happened. Everyone's still standing around. The Avenger says, Well? And Shadow replies, Their minds are being controlled. They cannot help their actions. And the one behind this knows much of my past. His powers were gained in the Orient, as were yours. And we see that the submarine... Who was peeking on everyone a minute ago has surfaced. His crew are tying up as they approach the little dock near the lighthouse. The shadow recognises this new arrival. and Indeed, we can see that he was the chap whose shining, smiling, bald face was in the, the opening splash panel. And the shadow yells, Shiwan Khan! We get close up of Khan as he says, And you, my friend, now you are the shadow. Times have changed. The shadow pulls his two pistols. The Avenger is also armed again as the shadow says, Times have not changed, and I am not your friend. Avenger, whenever you are ready. And they start moving down towards the submarine as the shadow laughs and Avenger (laughs) yells to his crew, Move it! A power-mad pirate somehow linked to the vague past of the man who is after his blood. Khan's army with stolen military weapons could take over country after country if not stopped here. Now... And everyone knows it. Yes, this, I imagine this is probably quite an exciting panel for regular readers of The Avenger in the Shadow because we see Margot and Smitty and Shrivi all firing their guns down towards the, the new arrivals rushing up from the, the submarine. And obviously I realise now that that's who that was in the opening splash image as well. Nelly, the lady in green, gets a close-up in the next panel. She says, There's so many, they keep coming! To which Jericho says, Then fight harder, woman! Fight harder! There's a shot from the top of the lighthouse. I wonder how he got up there. There's a pause, he takes a shot and then... Uh, as one of the good guys falls to the ground. As the wounded Josh falls, Richard Benson does what he does best. Avenges! Yes, we see the Avenger hurl his knife, his dagger, all the way up to the top of the lighthouse with a sound effect, and it strikes the bad guy, who yells, and falls off the top of the balcony, thankfully. Ignoring a hail of bullets, the night creature challenges the submarine. Yes, the night creature, that's another name for the shadow, is the blams and 
pows go on all around him. He runs down the, the ramp towards the submarine, saying, The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. But Khan gestures to his men at this point, saying, Ignore your eyes, fools. Fire all weapons within two feet of the image you see. So that's interesting, because we see the shadow is casting a long shadow, and again, he must have hypnotic powers that's making the bad guys see something a lot worse mm -hmm. than what we are seeing. Again, this is my ignorance, I'm not sure. <laughs> you see Margot flipping one of the bad guys over as Harry appears to be doing a judo chop on one of the others. Margot says, It sounds like your boss and Ken studied mind control together in the Orient at one time. Lady, I don't know. I don't want to know. And you'd probably be a lot healthier if you didn't know. We see Shawan Khan giving an order as he says, Bring out the German mortars. We'll end this now. What he doesn't see is that the shadow has managed to climb to the top of the conning tower of the submarine and he leaps down as the captioning continues. But Shawan Khan doesn't know that the shadow possesses some powers that were learned in places other than the Orient. And the shadow leaps down, smothering Khan in his cape. There's another <laughs> peal of the shadow's laughter. And the captioning continues. Now he knows. Too late. For suddenly, where the two struggled, there is nothing. Yeah, and this final panel of page 15 is weird. It almost looks like there's a massive flash of light emerging from where the shadow was. Almost like, the, like they've both vanished. McMurdy is saying to his boss, Mr. Benson! Mr. Benson! Did you see that? All is not as we see it, Mac, but I do know what it was I saw. Get me a grenade. Clear away! And Avenger pulls the pin on the grenade that McMurdy has brought. We can see Shrevy and some of the others kicking around. McMurdy is nearby. We can see the submarine in the distance. And McMurdy's obviously got an idea what the, the Avenger is going to do. For he says, but what about that shadow fella? What about him? Says the Avenger as he throws the grenade down towards the submarine. He's a stunning aim. As we see the open hatch of the conning tower and the grenade flies into it. And there is a massive kablam to round out page 16 as the submarine is completely blown up. Oh, there's a nice full page DC house ad for the Bible tabloid and the All-Star Comics tabloid. Oh, and there's the other advert for tabloids, which I've also shared on the socials before now, so you can look back a few weeks and before the Seven Soldiers episodes, before the Spectre episodes, and you'll see those. Top of page 17, there is a caption. A group of tired and bleeding fighters line the beach, looking for any sign of life. Yes, the assembled heroes and agents all looked at the, the burning remains of the submarine. Jericho says, The Shadow, Khan, Blown to bits, Harry says. If they were ever there. Which I doubt, says Margot, and then Nelly contributes. All this appearing and disappearing is beyond me. Margot then points down towards the sea, saying, Look! And the shadow's laughter <laughs> echoes around. The sea emerges from the water, walking up towards the others. The Avenger says, Khan, is he dead? You see the water dripping off the shadows he approaches, and he replies, I would be a cynic to say no. But I would be a fool to say yes. See the Avenger and Nelly and Margot and Jericho and Harry and Smitty all standing as the captioning reads. No one speaks for minutes. Then an unfaltering proclamation by the Avenger. Khan's scheme for military domination must be kept in check. My people will maintain that vigilance. We see the shadow casting a massive silhouette over the lighthouse which still continues to burn as does the, the submarine of course as the shadow replies. There is much evil in the world. Despite your approach, you can be of help. You may continue your operation, Avenger. Me? exclaims McMurdy in disbelief. He may? Who do you think? But then McMurdy is astonished to see... Oh, what? He's gone! And indeed, the shadow has vanished. Jericho and Smitty look on as the Avenger says... So he is. And all his crew seem to have gone with him. Gosh. McMurdy throws his hands up in the air as he walks off, saying... The nerve of that man. He's nuts, I tell you. He's plain nuts. Maybe. I only hope he doesn't overstep the bounds of justice with his brutal manhunt. Or else, insane or not, he will have to be stopped by Justice Incorporated. And the spectacular final panel shows the Avenger surrounded by Nelly and Margot, who I guess must have jumped sides at this point, <laughs> and Smitty and McMurdy and a symbolic image of the shadow looking down at them as his laughter echoes around and a small caption reads the, the end? end another caption reads next issue on sale during the second week in may yep issue 12 would be the final issue i really enjoyed that i'm intrigued enough to actually read the other ones finally yay a convert no let's not go that far <laughs> but i have questions and i'm, I'm kind of intrigued enough by okay. the methodology of both both lads that I want to read some more stuff and see what else is going yeah. on mm -hmm. your thoughts then 
Yes, absolutely loved that. It was great fun. I think this is actually Shawan Khan's first appearance in this series. He does feature quite heavily in later series. Right. Uh, but And obviously he features, he's the main bad guy in the movie. Oh, right, okay. Which, right. Which a lot most people will know him from. I still haven't seen the movie. Oh, gasp. I know. The thing, is, <laughs> the thing is, you know, if you would take me up on my occasional offer of, com- of coming around one evening, we can go to Lasani, we, you could bring it around, we can sit and watch it. <laughs> Oh dear. I'll I clear that know. pile of comics from that, ch- that couch and you can sit <laughs> down. So he is, uh, he is the main villain of the Shadow. He's actually the villain in the first issue of the Archie comics Shadow as well. Oh, really? Yeah, and he looks totally different than that. It's, it's very funny. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. do, you ha- do you have that in your collection? Yes. I have to see if you can, if you can find that and dig it out and we can post some comparative panels I've, on the socials I've because it'll, some, yeah. it'll be slim pickings this week. I managed to find <laughs> the orig- a scan of the original art of this cover last night, so that was Ooh, something. So wow. at the very least it'll be cover panels, original art, and a whole bunch of foreign reprints of other issues of the mm-hmm, shadow. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So uh, we have to jump back and talk about one point in particular with Shrevi reading Detective Comics number one. Yes. Now, the cover is slightly different from yes. the caricature Chinese face that's on Detective Comics number one. Mm-hmm. I would still say it's a Chinese figure, I think. Well, it's, it's very recognisable to my eyes. Uh-huh. It's got the sort of box yes. logo thing, which I don't think mm-hmm. issue one had. It's a cool thing to see, though, isn't it? Oh, yes, without a doubt. And obviously, it's quite cool that uh, Shrevi is a, is a fan. <laughs> yeah. It's it's quite amusing because it, it's very good at establishing when and where this is sort of taking place. Mm-hmm. It's obviously it's pre World War Two. Yeah, the Tech Comics number one on the stands, etc. Mm-hmm. It's a nice little fourth wall sort of puncturing sort of. Moment. Yep. Another reason to cover this issue. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I mean, I, I have questions that you've read a lot more of, of this sort of stuff than I have. Do okay, all, finally. All these characters like Smitty and Jericho and the guy with the eye thing and Margot, do they all appear in stories that you've read or you're familiar with? Yes, uh, Margot and Margot's actually probably best known to Shadow fans as being a sidekick in the, the radio series. Okay. Because she's pretty much, I think she's in every episode of that. It's her and Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town, I think they call him. But in that, the shadow is basically, is Slomont Cranston, that every kind of media that portrays the shadow does it slightly differently. Okay. Because the radio series, he is definitely Lamont Cranston and he's not quite as powerful. He kind of like turns invisible and investigates crime with Margot Lane. Whereas in The Pulps, he's got the whole series of agents, as you see here in the comics as well. Uh-huh. To be honest, the movie actually does cover this quite well right. in some ways because... He does like save someone and then basically says, now you'll work for me. Okay. You owe me, so you'll work for me. So you'll be one of my agents and blah, blah, blah. Right. So that's one of the things that's quite good that the movie's very good at. A lot of hardcore Shadow fans really dislike the movie because it tried to be a bit of everything. Okay. Because the radio fans didn't like that it wasn't like the radio. The comic fans didn't like that it wasn't like the comic. <laughs> the pulp fans thought it moved too far away from the pulps. But the Shadow is this character that, as I said, Archie Comics in the 60s made him like a silly superhero. Sure. So you can do anything with this character. But basically, the movie tried to amalgamate most of these concepts. And um, I think it did it rather well, to okay. be perfectly honest. Right. Anyway, I, will have to, I will have to check it out, I think, at this, yeah. at this rate. But Marco is a strong feature in, in the comics, as is Harry. Now, Harry, for a lot of the pulps, Harry features a lot more than the Shadow does. Oh, really? Because he's his main agent. In fact, the very first Shadow pulp, I think it's the Living Shadow, I think it's called. It's basically told through Harry, and the Shadow just appears a few times just to like, guide him, uh-huh. to recruit him. And it's, it's really fascinating, because I read that just a few years ago. Uh, I went back and reread that one. So yeah, Harry is basically the main agent, and also Harry and Margot are picked up on much later on when, like, during the Howard Chicken run, right? And also the run that follows that as well. Okay. So yeah, they are prominent features in the comics, and they prominently feature in the pulps as well. Excellent. Burbank's very much his lieutenant Uhura. Pretty much, he basically is the one that gets all the information and passes it all the information out to the, the agents and he basically is is the admin guy sure. for the Shadow, really. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's his function, really. All the Shadow's agents have got sort of specialist abilities and things, you know, they've got like, an expert in whatever. It's the whole non-power team of experts sort of thing, but it's almost Mission Impossible style in that certain agents are recruited for certain missions, if you know what I mean. For, sure, uh-huh. for certain, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit like that. I hadn't actually thought about that until just now. So there we are, that's that's the shadow. And just to think, I'll be honest, I've read very little of. I've got I've read the seventy series, I read the ninety series. I think I actually read the Dynamite series when it was out a while back, but I just read them kinda of once and didn't really stay with me. Right, okay. 
I do find the Avengers origin fascinating. But it's again, it's the, it's like the whole Shadow, Doc Savage, Justice Inc. as Axis almost. Yeah, huh? Yeah, because they all turned up in First Wave as well when DC did that in the yeah, early two thousands. A few of the First Wave things. I've got a whole bunch of the spirit, and I think I've got mm-hmm. the, I've got the first wave series itself. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I bought any of the Doc Savage or anything like that. Yeah. I always sort of appreciate it when when they try and do something like that to kind mm-hmm. of keep these characters in the, and they involve Batman, which I think was quite canny in yeah. the first wave. Mm-hmm. I always appreciate when they try and do this to kind of try and reawaken interest in these, yeah, or to perpetuate interest in these characters. But you know, they never sort of take off in a way. It's a shame. I mean, the, the spirit series always lasts a bit longer than other ones, but I think that's yeah. because it's maybe a stronger character, or there's more Eisner fans around that are going to. Yeah. Pay attention to it. And you get people like Darwin Cook working on it, you know, that's that's never gonna hurt. Yeah, all those covers by Brian Bolland at various points as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Will we ever do the spirit on the podcast? I don't know. Hmm. hmm. I don't think so. I don't think we have to. Maybe. I mean, there's obviously there's the equivalent of him midnight who rocks up in the All Star Squadron eventually, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe we'll talk a bit more about the similarities when we get there, but that's a I'll good see way away. You talked about the artwork in this story. It's stunning, isn't it? Yes. So rich and lurid and moody, and it just feels really, really evocative of the time. Mm-hmm. Every panel could be like, you know, a shot in a movie. Yeah. Frankly, yeah. it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. And the shadow's working in the, the invisible ink. That reflection of a minute is fantastic because yeah. the water's, rip- well, the, the liquid is rippling. Uh-huh. And, you know, you do have this shadow of the shadow. Yeah, it's very, very subtle. I mean, you could quite easily miss it, but it's definitely there. I mean, very impressed because I know that obviously Michael Kaluta drew some issues. I think Frank Robbins Frank did Robbins some as well. Did, yeah. I'm a big fan of Frank mm-hmm. Robbins. Yeah. Mainly because I read some issues of Invaders when I was a kid mm-hmm. and, he, and he drew them, obviously. But Frank has that tendency of, to draw people in the 1940s, but they look like people from the 1970s. So <laughs> with no disrespect, I think Cruz might be a better fit. Yeah. I mean, this this is honestly some of the best art I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It's stunning. Yeah. You know, again, with no disrespect, but compare this to some of the, the other stuff we've seen recently, like, you know, that... You know, I, I levelled the complaint that I thought some of Novik's stuff in The Flash was a bit flat. And <laughs> compared to this, it's, I mean, different artists obviously suit different stories. This yeah. style of artwork probably wouldn't suit an early 70s Flash story, but mm-hmm. it just shows that, you know, the range of styles that are still available or that people were doing, it's just like, yeah, it's amazing to behold. I'm sure I've seen some other stuff of this guy's, but I don't know if he did Jonah Hex or maybe it's just in some of the, the anthology books. Yeah, his, his style would certainly suit Jonah Hex. I'm trying to think where it was that I've seen him. Someone will probably be shouting at me or someone will, <laughs> someone will reply to a tweet at some point and tell me where I'm going wrong, I'm sure. But no, the, the artwork's beautiful. And I'm really fascinated by all the, the range and all of the different looks and styles of all the various supporting characters. I'm, yeah. wondering, mm-hmm. I'm intrigued as to know, you know what their stories are and I'm intrigued now to kind of finally maybe read some more of The Shadow and see if Harry's involved or if Burbank's involved or Smitty's mm-hmm. involved or Margot's involved. And just get... I think this is quite a good entry point for anyone who hasn't read anything yep. featuring either of the characters. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And obviously this is maybe a way to get people reading The Shadow to pick up The Avenger. Absolutely. That's... We keep saying The Avenger. It's just a sink. Yeah. It's, it's the name of the comic. So, yeah. I mean, that's... That's exactly what happened. I mean, it's kind of like we were saying about when Prez rocked up in Supergirl a few months ago. You know, Uh it's like, Mm -hmm. it's a good bit of cross promotion. And issue one of Just the Think was only out at this point. So it made made sense. I mean, there's only only one more issue of The Shadow left. Mm -hmm. Just the Think manages to get another three out. So it's it's quite nice that we've managed to squeeze all three Shadow stories that that we would cover (laughs) in this year. Yeah, you know, 2024 or the year of the shadow with, mm-hmm. with the two Batman ones that, that Steve and I knew and, and me have, have done now, and it's it's interesting, just interesting to get a taste of. I mean, the thing that sort of impresses me is that the shadow seems. I kept calling him the Spectre while we're recording, <laughs> listeners, so you get you'll get a nice montage of that at the end. But he really, obviously, has to me at least really supernatural or extra powers and, and mm-hmm. abilities far beyond those of mortal men, etc. Like the way that he suddenly. You know, what did he do with Khan there when he leapt off the submarine? And the way that he just seems to, like, flit about, I'm intrigued. Yes. Yes. I do definitely want to read some more. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad to hear this. Oh, that's all right, then. Hey, hey. Any other specifics from the story that you want to highlight or talk about? or The unmasking of the shadow is something that was fascinating as well. The Dark Eagle. Yeah, the Dark Eagle, which is nothing I've heard referenced before, I'll be honest. Right, okay. Maybe it's some kind of Chinese superstition or something. Maybe the shadow Could is doing be. some kind of hypnotic effect on that poor guy and he's making him yeah. see what he, uh-huh. what he wants to see almost. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm. Must be. But yeah, that's that was really interesting as well. Yeah. The lighthouse, just the lightning crackling in the background. That's periscope aspect picture that I'm looking at just now. Mm-hmm. It's just phenomenal. Well, it's beautiful. Yeah. It really is. 
Yes, it's nice to cover the meeting of these two pulp titans in the pages of a DC comic. And as you said, the mention of Detective Comics number one was probably justification <laughs> on its own, really, as well. Because obviously there's a, an issue of Brave and Bold coming up very soon that we're going to do for similar reasons. Mm. Anyway. So listeners, do you think we did the story justice, Inc.? <laughs> or was it a shadow of its potential? <laughs> Why don't you write to us and let us know? You can email us at theearthtopodcast at gmail.com. Make sure you follow us on social media because we will have some lovely bonus material for this episode. On Facebook and Instagram, we're at the Earth 2 Podcast, and at Twitter, we're at podcast underscore Earth 2, and it is the number two for all of our socials. If you're feeling generous, you could go to wherever it is you receive your podcasts, give us a positive review, or go to our coffee page and buy Peter the Price of a Beverage, or tell your pals, or tell the folks down a local comic shop, or the folks at the con you're going to at the weekend or yeah spread the word it's appreciated we've, we've picked up a few new listeners recently who are telling us what they think and that's good to know because it's always nice to be made aware that you're not just shouting into the void it must be said indeed anyway i'm going to ask you all to check out opal city confidential and stop let's team up from our pal ross Aitken. and i was on stop let's team up recently discussing an issue of DC Comics Presents and a couple more appearances on Opal City Confidential coming up because there are some more talking with David and some more times past things happening. So I'm going to be chatting to, to Ross about those. Our friend Shag Matthews has also just started his Just the Society in the 90s thread on his Just the Society hey. Presents podcast. So we would obviously send you in the direction of that as well. Give it all the support. It's going to be a very interesting run of stories that we won't be discussing in our podcast, obviously, because it's way, way, way in the future and way, way, way post-crisis. On that bombshell, I've been Peter. And I've been David. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon on... The Earth, Earth 2 podcast. podcast. Transmatter Cube activated. Return coordinate set for Earth Prime. Summer 75 was the summer of the Avenger. I remember the summer of 75. Oh, I can't remember the next line. How is your husband and how is your wife? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I can't remember. I used to, I did used to laugh at the Ramblers, but I used to spin past them anytime I watched them subsequently. You know, I remember the summer. Of... Have you not got the album? No, no. I, well, I, I will cure you. Yeah, never bought it. I bought the singles. Okay, I put it on in the shop a couple months ago, and Jim was going off his nut because he thought this is amazing. Vic's version of Dizzy is phenomenal. I know. Yeah. But anyway, D I Z Z Y. And then there's that version of Abide With Me when he's on the horse in the video, mm-hmm. which was, and then Matt Monroe's Born Free, they'd Born Free him to yep. the Pops, and they were mm-hmm. handing out sandwiches and he had a clipboard. Anyway, let's go back to the point. Objective International Invasions. Spectre reads this and says... No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. The shadow does. Spectre. <laughs> High five. <laughs> How often am I going to say that? <laughs> Listeners, take a drink. <laughs> the shadow of the Spectre looms over our latest episode as David <laughs> struggles to remember the name. With that, the shadow pulls the pin from the grenade. No, he doesn't. It's Avenger. So he does. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, page 16, we're nearly there. I shouldn't call him the Spectre. <laughs> You've got a white face in it, hasn't <laughs> I can't wait for the outtakes on this, really. Anyway, right, okay. She said clear away, right? No one speaks for minutes. Then an unfaltering cop- copulation. <laughs> an unfaltering <laughs> proclamation by Peter Watson.